Hey, Tony here. Today I'm going to tell you all of the films that I watched during the month of July. I was able to see two films in the theater. Um, I watched a lot of Criterion movies during the month of July. So I thought I'd go ahead and take time today to just show you and tell you what I watched. So the first film that I watched um, on July 1st was I went and saw Elvis at the theater. Um, I really enjoyed Elvis. I thought it was a really good um, story, some really good acting, some really good performances. I'm very much looking forward to seeing it again when it comes out on physical media. So if you haven't seen Elvis yet, I would highly recommend you check it out. Um, the second film that I watched, um, I did start my Criterion watching. Um, the very first Criterion film that I watched was this film called Come and See. Um, I've had this for several months now. Never did take the time to watch it, so I thought this was a good opportunity to go ahead and watch some of the Criterion movies that I have in the collection that I haven't seen yet. And Come and See was a really great performance. Um, very good film. I really enjoyed this one. Um, the third day that I watched, the third day I watched two films. The first one I watched was Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. I had been hearing so many good things about this film. Did not get to see it in the theater like I wanted to, um, but I did take time to watch it. Um, it was an okay film. I, I was really hyped to see this one because everybody was just raving about how good it was. But to me, I did not enjoy the film as much as I thought I would. So it was a little bit of a disappointment, but I will check it out again at a later date just to see if maybe it was the mood that I was in that day. I don't know what it was, but anyway, I did not enjoy it as much as most people did. Um, on that same day, I did watch a Criterion release. I watched One Eyed Jacks with Marlon Brando. Really enjoyed this film. Really enjoyed the special features, finding out how difficult it was for Marlon Brando to do this film. Um, the performances were really good. I do enjoy Western. Don't really remember too much about the film right now, um, but anyways, um, I did watch One Eyed Jacks. Okay, on the fourth day, I watched two films that same day also. I watched Shock Corridor. This is another Criterion release that I had been wanting to see for a while. Um, about this person who, um, I guess they put on a performance of being insane so that they can get a, a news story. Um, I didn't really enjoy the movie as much as I thought I would. Um, it wasn't terrible. But I just really couldn't get into this one. But on that same day, I did watch Miller's Crossing. Um, this right here was a Joel and Ethan Cohen film that I wanted to see for a very long time. I finally took the time to watch it. Really enjoyed this film. I would highly recommend you check that one out. Okay, another series of films that I started watching um, one day after another day after another day. Um, or some of the Guillermo del Toro, del Toro films. The first one I watched was Kronos. Really enjoyed this one. Um, had never seen any of these films before, so I wanted to check them out. I've had them in the collection for a while. But anyways, Kronos, I really enjoyed that one. The Devil's Backbone, to me, was even better. I really enjoyed The Devil's Backbone. Highly recommend you check that out. And then lastly, I watched Pan's Labyrinth. Really enjoyed this one. So with all three of these films, I do believe that there were subtitles that had to be read, which I'm not a big fan of, but um, I did really enjoy all three of these films. Definitely check out Pan's Labyrinth if you've never seen it. Okay, the next film that I saw was another one in the theater. My wife and I went and saw Thor Love and Thunder. We really enjoyed it. We were a little bit disappointed with it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it was about it, but it just um, was kind of goofy. But we did enjoy it. We had a lot of fun with it. So I'm definitely looking forward to checking out Thor Love and Thunder again once it comes out on physical media. Okay, the next film I watched was In the Heat of the Night. I had never seen this one before. I've been wanting to see it. Um, I did recently get the 4K release, but since it was Criterion Month, I did want to just watch my Criterion Collection Edition. Really enjoyed the special features on this. Really enjoyed the film. I thought it was great. So very happy that I had took time to watch that. Okay, the next film I watched, I was a little bit disappointed with, and that's um, this film called Brazil. Um, this was another one that had really been hyped up for me. 
so I think I was just expecting a little bit more than what I got from it. I did not enjoy this movie at all, um, but this right here might be another one that I need to rewatch before I decide if I'm going to get rid of it out of the collection or not. So Brazil, I do not, I did not like it. <clears throat> okay, the next film I watched was Black Swan, so I did take a break from the Criterion Collection. I wanted to see something a little bit different. I've always wanted to see Black Swan and I finally took the chance or took the opportunity to watch it. Really enjoyed this one. I thought that Natalie Portman had a really great performance in this film. Um, an Oscar worthy performance. I, I think she might have actually won an award for this. I, I can't really remember. But anyway, Black Swan was great. I really enjoyed it. Okay, th um, the next film I watched was another Criterion Collection film on 4K and it was Double Indemnity. Really loved this film. This right here was probably one of my favorite Criterion Collection films that I've watched um, during the month. Highly recommend you check it out. I really enjoyed um, Fred McMurray's performance and so very happy that I took the um, opportunity to watch this one. The next one was another great one that I really enjoyed and that was a film called Claudine. Um, I've had this, for, I had this I purchased this back when it was released. Never did take the time to watch it. It's got a great performance with James Earl Jones and of course Diane Carroll. Really enjoyed the family atmosphere, um, the city life, all the things that they went through. I really just enjoyed the story very much. Okay, the next Criterion release film I watched was Rumblefish, with, which is a Francis Ford Coppola film with um, Matt Dillon in it. This one was filmed right after um, Out the Outsiders, which I was not aware of, so I really enjoyed the special features of this. Um, as far as the film, it wasn't my favorite. Um, I did enjoy The Outsiders a lot more than I enjoyed this one, but this was a good watch. I'm very happy that I have this one in the collection. Okay, the next film I watched was Fear and Loathing. Um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. This was a film that I had had in the collection for quite a min quite a number of years that I've never had taken a chance to watch. Um, I did see someone post a post about this on Instagram, so I thought I'd go ahead and just check it out. I enjoyed the film, but it was another one that was not my favorite. Um, but anyways, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I don't really have much to say about that one. Okay, the next film that I watched was this 4K release for Raging Bull. I had never seen this one before. I've had it in the collection for, I've had the film in the collection for a while, but I just had um, recently this month picked up this 4K edition. So I decided to open it up and check it out. I really enjoyed it. I thought the 4K presentation was great. It looked great. It sounded great. Really good story. So very happy that I was able to watch Raging Bull. And then the next Criterion Collection that I watched is this film called The Philadelphia Story. I've had this one in the collection for a while. It has Cary Grant and James Stewart in it and Katherine Hepburn. Really enjoyed this one. Um, the day that I watched this was the day that I realized I was feeling bad and I was sick. So I do remember not really getting into the story as much as I thought I would. Um, I remember feeling pretty lethargic and everything that day, so um, I did enjoy the story, but I definitely need to revisit this when I'm not sick. So after I watched this one, um, this was the first time in two years that I started on a path to where I was sick, and I was unable to watch a film for three days. So I was in the bed for three days after this film. So after this film, I was in the bed for three days. I didn't watch any movies for three days. And like I said, that's the first. That was the first time I had not seen any films in two years. I've been watching at least a minimum of one a day. So I did hate that I missed out of watching. I, I hate that I missed my streak up of um, the movie every day. But after this one, I didn't watch a film for three days. So when I started feeling better and I felt like getting out of the bed and I was able to watch a film, the very first film that I watched was The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Um, I wanted something a little bit different than the Criterion Collection to watch. And I've had this in the watch pile for a very long time since it actually came out. And I wanted to check it out. Really loved the story. Um, I've always been a big um, Tammy Faye Baker um, 
fan, I guess you would say. Not a fan, but anyway, I've always liked Tammy Faye. I've always thought she was a real good, genuine person. So I really did enjoy this performance. I'm very happy that I took the um, opportunity to watch that one. Highly recommend you check it out. Um, I do remember all the stuff that was happening during those days um, in the in the 80s, and I felt really bad for her. Um, the next one I watched was this one called God Told Me To. Um, this right here was a new 4K release that had come out. I wanted to see something a little bit more of a horror film, but this did not deliver what I thought it would. Um, I did not enjoy this one as much as I thought I would, but I am happy that I checked it out. It's not a terrible film. I thought it looked and sounded great. Very nice 4K presentation, um, but just not a big fan of this particular film. So the next film I watched was back on the Criterion Collection. I finally took the time to watch Some Like It Hot. Um, this right here, of course, is a Marilyn Monroe film. It has Tony Curtis in it. And, um, crap, I can't remember his name all of a sudden. Um, but anyways, it had both, all three of these performances were excellent. Very fun story. I really enjoyed the performances. I do enjoy the classic Hollywood films. Um, so, um, Jack Lemmon is his name. Um, but anyway, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the special features. Um, this was actually the very first time I had seen this film. And it's the actual very first time I had ever seen Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe in any film. I would never seen any of her films before. So I thought that was great that I was um, actually able to, to see that. Okay, the next film that I watched was Straw Dogs. Um, this right here is a Dustin Hoffman film. And I can't remember what the lead actress's name was in this film. Um, but anyway, very good performances by everyone in it. Um, a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. Um, I had never seen the original before. Um, it is not a movie that you want to see if you're down in the dumps like I was that day. But um, overall, I really enjoyed it. Very depressing and dark movie. And it really does put you in that kind of mood. Um, but yeah, so I watched Straw Dogs, the original. And the next day, I took the time to watch Straw Dogs, the remake, which is just as intense and as depressing as the original, but with a different twist. It is a little bit different. Um, I had seen this one before. I actually saw this one in the theater when it came out, um, before I had ever even seen the original. But both of these Straw Dog films are very dark, gloomy films. Very well acted. I really enjoyed what I saw um, as far as the story and how it was shot and filmed and all of that good stuff. I did not, um, I would not, anyways, you have to be in a certain headspace to watch those. Okay, the next day I got off the Criterion Collection for a couple of days. I watched Cop Shop. This had been in my watch pile for a long time. Finally watched it. I loved this story. Um, very action-packed, um, very story-driven, great performances, great kills. If you have not seen Cop Shop, I highly recommend it. Okay, the next day I watched The Lost City um, on 4K. This right here is, of course, got Sandra Bullock and Chatham Tatum, Chatham Chate, Channing Tatum in it. I don't know why I couldn't say his name, but um, I really enjoy a good romantic comedy. I really enjoyed, I really, really enjoy Sandra Bullock's in all her films that she does. I think she's a great actress. She's fun to watch, very charismatic. I really enjoyed it. Um, as far as this jungle film is concerned, I thought it was, it was a fun watch. It's not one that I'll revisit anytime soon, but um, it kind of put me in the mind of Romance in the Stone, um, if you've ever seen that one. But um, definitely check out This Lost City if you've never seen it. Okay, the rest of the films that I watched in the month, of course, I finished out the Criterion Collection month with watching a Criterion. Uh, the rest of the month I watched the Criterion Collection films. Um, the first one I watched was Thief with James Caan. I'd had this one in the collection for a while. Never took the chance or never took the opportunity to watch it um, for whatever reason. But with the passing of him during, I think he died during this month, um, I thought I'd go ahead and check it out. Really enjoy this film. Um, it didn't quite live up to what I was expecting, 
but overall I really did enjoy it. Okay, the next the next Criterion film I watched is Love Jones. This is another new release that I picked up during the month. Um, and I enjoyed it. it I, I don't know. I just didn't really get into this one. I thought the performances were good. It looked really good. It sounded really good. All the jazz music music and everything. But for whatever my headspace wasn't in it, I didn't really enjoy it as much as I thought I would. Same way with this next one. I watched the Grand Budapest Motel. Um, I had had this one in the collection since its release. I really um, enjoy Wes Anderson films, and this is definitely, you can definitely tell it's a Wes Anderson film with the cast, with the storytelling and all that. Um, but it wasn't my favorite Wes Anderson film, but very happy to have it in the collection. Okay, the next one was another disappointment. I watched Oh Joy. Um, oh Joy, I don't know what I was expecting from this one. I guess looking at the artwork, I was expecting maybe an older film. I don't do very much um, research. I, I do a lot of research. I don't watch a lot of trailers or anything for some of the films that I pick up. So I don't know what I was expecting, but this right here was pretty much a letdown for me. It probably has one of my lowest scores on Letterboxd. Um, but maybe it just needs another revisit. Um, but anyway, I watched Oh Joy. And then the last film that I watched during the month of July is Written on the Wind. This right here is a Douglas Sirk film. I've really enjoyed the films that I've seen of his that are in the Criterion Collection. I've really enjoyed the performances of Rock Hudson, um, Robert Stack, and Lauren Bacall, I believe. I thought it was a great story. Um, I love classic Hollywood films. I thought it looked great. And so very happy that I finally had the opportunity to check out Written in the Wind. So those are the films that I watched during the month of July. It was not my best month as far as watching the films. Um, there was a lot of films in this month that I didn't really care much for. I don't know if it was because of me being sick during the month or, or what it was, but for whatever reason, um, hopefully in the month of August, I'll watch a lot of um, happier movies, maybe. Something that will kind of cheer me up. Um, but overall, I, I had a pretty good month as far as being able to watch a number of films. But anyways, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about the films that I watched in the month of July. And also let me know if you have any recommendations of films that I should watch during the month of August. Something that will be uplifting and make me happy. Hopefully you'll have some good suggestions. But if you like what you saw here today, please give it a thumbs up and share the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you do subscribe, please remember to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. If you haven't found me on my social media accounts, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. If you'd like to find out what I've been watching, you can find me over on Letterboxd. I do have all of those links down below. But thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.